Hi and welcome back to Yoga Berry, your yoga for scoliosis community. So today I've got a lovely practice for you which is especially for the lower back and all that you will need is a yoga belt or any belt or strap that you can find somewhere around the house and when you're ready just join me for the practice. My name is Christine Jaregi Berry, I'm a yoga teacher and I specialize in yoga for scoliosis. You will find some more information on my online courses and the in-person courses that I offer in the description below. We're going to start lying down. So let's just come to lying down, bring the knees in towards the chest and just give yourself a little bit of a stretch here. So hug the knees in towards you and you can rock from side to side a few times. This is one of the kind of nicest stretches for the lower back already. Just enjoy that little bit of a massage and you can even draw some circles here. So keep the knees together and then use the hands to circle the knees around in one direction and then the other direction. Good, and then we're gonna bring the feet flat on the ground. Have your feet about hip distance apart. And then just for a moment, just see if you can allow for the body to release into the ground in that position. So we're just gonna give the back a few breaths until you feel the shoulders set settling, until you feel the back of the rib cage settling towards the ground a little bit more. Just lying on the floor is one of the best things to do when your lower back is giving you trouble. And then from there, we're just gonna very slowly and gently roll from one edge of the pelvis to the other. So my knees are moving from side to side and it doesn't have to be a big movement. It's just a very gentle mobilizing of the lower back. Again, this should feel good. This should never feel um, painful, definitely. Good, and then let's release back to center. And then we're gonna now tilt the pelvis forwards and backwards. Now this is a little bit more tricky. So allowing, imagine the pelvis is a, a bowl shape and we're tipping the, the bowl forward, so letting it all spill out at the front and then tipping it back in towards you. So forwards and backwards. And one movement takes you more into an arch of the back and the other movement takes you into a flattening of the back. So in my experience, very often, um, there is lower back pain, it's because people don't have enough of an arch in the lower back and the back becomes really flat and that can cause problems. And obviously with scoliosis, um, one side feels different from the other as well. So that is another added challenge here. Good, so let's keep going with this little movement, forwards and backwards. Notice if one is easier than the other. Good, and then we're gonna take this into bridge pose. So bring your feet a little bit closer in towards you. And then imagine the knees are moving forwards beyond your feet when you press the feet into the ground and lift the hips off the floor. Knees reaching forwards, but the crown of the head is, is moving towards the back of the rim. So you're creating that traction in your bridge pose. You don't have to come very high it's about creating that little bit of length in the spine. And then we're gonna slowly release down and see if you can really release slowly from the top of the spine, releasing vertebra by vertebra until you come all the way down. When you come down, allow your pelvis to be back in neutral. So not a flat back. So we don't want to press the waist into the ground. Allow there to be a little bit of space underneath the lower back. Good, so let's do this again. Pressing the feet into the ground, the knees are moving forwards and the crown of the head into the other direction as you create that lovely traction in the spine. Imagine how you create all that lovely space for your discs. 
And then on the way down, we're releasing slowly, vertebra by vertebra. Releasing all the way down. Allow for the pelvis to be back in neutral. Take hold of your belt. We'll take it around the right foot. Right ball of the foot and we're going to extend the leg up towards the ceiling. Now if your hamstrings are tight and your leg doesn't fully straighten, that's okay. Maybe you are somewhere here and then you can work on um, pressing into that resistance of the belt. If you are quite flexible and see if you can really bring the belt around the, the ball of the foot and rather than trying to bring the leg in towards you, we're pressing with the ball of the foot into the belt and slightly pulling on the belt at the same time. So just creating that little bit of resistance and you should be feeling this all um, along the back of the leg, but with that little bit more stability. Good. Maybe drawing the leg in towards you a little bit more, but keeping that engagement of the leg. Good. We're just allowing all the muscles at the back of the leg to release and to lengthen a little bit more. Good. And then a little bit of a challenge. We're going to take the belt into the left hand and then internally rotate your leg. So internally rotating as if you're going slightly pigeon-toed. And then we're going to take the leg slightly across the midline and into the direction of the toes. And I didn't have to make a big movement to feel a stretch now all along the, more of the side of the leg. So see if you can find a different stretch. It's not so much about um, the exact shape or what it looks like, it's about where you feel the stretch. Just staying with it for a couple of breaths. And then let's Come back to center and change sides. So a little trick to change sides. I'm going to lift the left leg up and then replace the right foot that way. And you're already there. Good. So again, bring the leg up to a 90 degree angle. If your knee is bent, that's absolutely fine. You just want the sole of the foot to be facing up towards the ceiling. Especially if you are um, quite flexible, bring the belt around the ball of the foot so that you can actively press the ball of the foot up towards the ceiling and slightly pulling on the belt to create that resistance and the engagement through the muscles. Good. So I'm going to stay with this a few breaths, maybe drawing the leg in towards you a little bit more. Only if you can do this still with um, a long breath and see if you can keep your shoulders relaxed. Good, and then we're taking the belt into the right hand, internally rotating the leg. So again, being slightly pigeon-toed, bring the leg over towards the midline and then towards into the direction of where the toes are pointing. So just until you find the stretch a little bit more along the outside of the leg. So it might be in your calf muscle, it might be in your glutes, it depends on where you have most resistance. It's always good to notice where that might be and how the sides feel different on one side to the other. Good. Let's slowly release and let's release the belt. Just straighten your legs for a moment. Just notice what it feels. Notice what your back, your lower back feels like and then we're going to bend the knees roll over to the side and we're going to come into all fours from there good so let's come into a little bit of cat cow one of my favorite poses so bring your hands under the shoulders knees hip distance apart let's get some movement into the back now so we're inhaling lifting the chest Exhale to round through the spine, drop the head. Enjoy that movement, that opening of the front of the body and back of the body. Good, so every inhale, the chest moves forwards, let the belly drop and then exhale, rounding through the spine. 
Good, come back to center and then we're just going to move the hips from side to side now. So a little bit of sideward movement, one side and the other. And then we'll allow for the shoulders and the head to turn to the same side as your hips. So you're creating this banana shape with the body. So imagine you're squeezing the left side of the waist and then you're squeezing the muscles on the right side of the waist. Good. Just for a few rounds. And then coming back to center, tuck your toes under and then we'll bring the hips halfway between the knees and the heels and then start to walk the hands forwards, coming into an extended puppy pose. Really sending the, the table on towards the back of the room and reach the arms forwards a little bit more. So if you know your curvature and, and want to make those little adjustments, if you have done my four weeks course, you will know what to do. Then you can slightly move the hips over to one side or the other or moving the hands over to one side or the other to counter your curve. Otherwise, just enjoy that length. Just enjoy lengthening through the crown of the head and the tailbone. Good, and then slowly release, coming back to center. Let's come back to cat cow for a moment. Do that rounding and arching. Good, and then we're gonna come to lying down on the belly. And let's come into Sphinx pose. So we're gonna bring, come onto the forearms, elbows directly underneath the shoulders. Now, if this is too much for you, if your lower back seems to be complaining in this pose, then slide your hands forwards a little bit more. So come to a place where you are absolutely comfortable. So wherever that might be, see if you can just close your eyes for a moment and allow for the body to be in this shape. Again, we are holding this for a few breaths because I want you to really notice and take responsibility about what is going on in your body. So if this doesn't feel good for you, come down a little bit lower. So there's no need to completely avoid it. Maybe you are all the way down on the floor and, and rest your forehead on the forearms. If that is the only way you can be comfortable, then you stay there. If you lift up a little bit, then you lift up a little bit. What we are doing here is we are releasing the lower back and we're allowing for the tailbone to, to come into more of a neutral position and point more up towards the ceiling rather than tucking the tailbone under all the time. Good. Just stay for a couple of more breaths. And then let's slowly release, bring the forehead onto the forearms and then rock the hips from side to side as if you want to shake out um, the lower back and the tailbone a little bit. So little rocking movements. This can feel really, really nice in the back. Good. And then let's bring the hands on either side of the chest, just pushing yourself up into hands and knees and you, let's come to, into a lovely cat stretch here. So back into all fours and then um, rounding the back. See if you can really press the floor away from you. Drop the head. Good. And then let's slowly release. And our resting pose today is going to be Viparita Karani with which is legs against the wall. So you're gonna come to lying down on your back. Come as closely as possible to the wall and then bring the legs up onto the wall. Now, if you are not by a wall or the wall is not free, you can also rest the lower legs on a chair. So completely up to you. Just make sure you're comfortable. If you want support underneath your head, you can bring a pillow or something underneath the head. And see if you can stay there for just a few breaths or maybe longer if you enjoy this. It's a lovely way to release any tension around the lower back. 
Good, so I'm gonna stay another couple of breaths, but feel free to stay for as long as it feels good for you when you're ready to come out. You bend your knees and then roll yourself over to the side. Take your time to come out of the pose because it is an inversion. So the body is literally upside down. So you want to allow for it to adjust before you come up to sitting. So if you are still in the pose, stay there. Um, if you have come out, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon for the next video.